Hey guys, welcome to yet another episode of Conversations Kanisa and today things are a bit different. We are tackling performance and we are privileged to have one of the most iconic cars in the global performance scene, the Mitsubishi Lancer Evolution 10. And because Conversations is that channel that is going to guarantee you an alluring motor vehicle experience, we are going to give you an up close and candid review of this car and I'll be your host Eric Wakabi, Eric with the CK, do follow me at a personal level on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Uh, sawa sawa. And uh, now we value your feedback at Conversations. For a very long time, guys have asked for these cars, and uh, courtesy of Auto Select by Conversations, we finally have it on Canisa. So let's get up close and candid with this car. Before we talk about the Evolution 10, uh, many a times uh, most of us look for budget-friendly cars or getting a car at a very fair deal. Part of those uh, places where you can get a car at a fair deal is at an auction and most public auctions are mad with chaos. So there is a convenient way to get an auction car and that is on Car Duka. So check out the website, the link is in the description and see which cars are on auction and uh, check out the good prices. Try to bid your own price. You never know, you might win uh, the bid and uh, have yourself a car at an unbelievable price. Now let's talk about the Evolution 10. The Evolution series has been one of the most iconic cars when it comes to performance globally. It's based on the Mitsubishi Lancer and it has ran for 10 generations from the Evo 1 all the way to this, the Mitsubishi Lancer Evolution 10. Uh, we have had uh, some very popular variants of the Evolution like uh, the Tommy Makinen uh, editions. But today I want us to talk about this. This is probably the most non-evolution evolution to be ever produced by Mitsubishi and most evolution purists were very angry with this car and I'll tell you why. So we start with the Prima Feishi. Well, whenever, whenever an evolution pulls up uh, to the parking lot, well, you have to note the differences between this car and a typical boring Mitsubishi Lancer. So part of the design cues that will let you know that this an actual evolution is the grill, the rims, the brakes and even the spoiler. So it's, it, it's different, it's tuned towards performance. It's basically a performance based uh, Mitsubishi Lancer. Uh, it does look quite, uh, quite sporty and aggressive and uh, the, from the Mitsubishi Lancer Evolution 1 all the way to the Evolution 9, we can comfortably say that those who are a Subaru WRX's uh, biggest nightmare. But as for the Evolution 10, it's a bit meh. And I'll tell you why it's not... If you, if you love the Mitsubishi Lancer Evolution series, then your least favorite Lancer Evolution is most likely to be this one. And uh, let's start by looking at the engine and I'll tell you why this is the black sheep in a flock of white sheep that were the Evolution 1 all the way to the Evolution 9. I will start this segment by saying just because it's quick, it doesn't mean it has character. Well, what do we have under the hood of the Mitsubishi Lancer Evolution 10? Ah, <sighs> One of the best engines at Mitsubishi and one of the engines that most people, most purists would worship is the 4G63 Turbo or the 4G63T. And this engine was so good that it was used from the EVO 1 all the way to the EVO 9 with just updates being made to it. So that's how good uh, that engine was. Unfortunately, on the Mitsubishi Lancer Evolution 10, well, we know Mitsubishi has been on a downward trajectory and maybe they made a huge mistake and it's very unfortunate that the Evolution series had to end this way. To a normal guy, this car might be a big deal, but to a Mitsubishi Lancer Evolution purist, uh, this car is a huge disappointment. Why? 
First of all, the engine that it runs on is the 4B11T. It's a 2-litre four-cylinder turbocharged. Sawa, sawa. Uh, and like, we, we, purists would have loved to have the 4G63T on the last edition of the Lancer because this was the Lancer Evolution 10 because this was the last it was the last of the Evolution series. And I don't know what Mitsubishi thought when they put in a totally different engine on it. <sighs> anyway, it's quite disappointing whereas Subaru maintained their engines all through the WRX series. Mitsubishi decided to do something a little bit different and boring. Well, let's talk about the power figures. And I said, just because it's quick, it doesn't mean it has character. Well, the 4B11 might boast of uh, some very good power output. However, the 4G63T would still have been a very good engine option on the Lancer Evolution 10. But let's talk about the power figures. Well, if you're buying a Mitsubishi Lancer Evolution, the power figures will be dependent on the market that this car is built for but at least the minimal the minimal power figures that you can get on a mitsubishi lancer evolution 10 is around 287 horsepower so that 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 being minimum well let's talk about the markets uh, part of the markets where you can import an evolution from globally uh, bring it to kenya or you would have brought it uh, from is uh, the japanese market or the UK market. For the Japanese market, we have a few variants of the Mitsubishi Lancer Evolution 10. We have the RS. Now, the RS was more of the base model of the Lancer Evolution 10. Came with a five-speed manual. Uh, then, from the RS, we have the GSR, GSR Premium, and we have the GSR tuned by Ralliat. And Ralliat, it's Mitsubishi. Ralliat was Mitsubishi's sports division. Uh, they would tune the hell out of Mitsubishi cars. Unfortunately, Mitsubishi are now embracing boring CVTs, so Ralliat does not make much sense today. Uh, let's talk about now other markets. Like the UK market, you can get insane power figures from the Lancer Evolution 10 because we have variants that were reworked by Mitsubishi specifically for the UK market, all the way from the FQ300 to the FQ440MR. And these Evos for the UK market had insane power figures all the way up to around 400 horsepower. Now the FQ badge was known to be on other Mitsubishi Lancers, uh, the other Mitsubishi Lancer Evos from the 1 all the way to the 9. But uh, for the UK market, they decided to give it one last shot and they put in an FQ badge on the Mitsubishi Lancer Evolution 10. And that is why we have FQ300 all the way to FQ440MR. Now, the unique thing about what people say that FQ or Mitsubishi Lancer Evolution 10 or any other Mitsubishi Lancer Evolution means freaking quick. Yeah, so for the UK market, they, they got the chance to have the holy grail of the Mitsubishi Lancer Evolution 10. Now, let's talk about the transmission uh, options for the Lancer Evolution 10. Uh, you either get the five-speed manual transmission, which I would buy, or which I would love to have, or what we have on this car, you get a, <laughs> a twin clutch, a supertronic shift transmission. It's, yeah, I think I had it right. It's a TC SST. So it's, it's more of a six-speed twin clutch. Automatic transmission. Yeah, and uh, for a performance car, it's, it's best to be in manual transmission. And that is why the ones with the TC SST are not necessarily uh, a Mitsubishi Lancer purist or a Mitsubishi Lancer Evolution purist piece of cake. Now, there was, however, one edition of the Mitsubishi Lancer Evolution 10 that uh, at least got close to the Evolution legacy. And that was the final edition of the Mitsubishi Lancer Evolution 10 that was in production in 2015. For the Japanese market, only 1,000 were made. They had final edition emblems, they had uh, a black roof, and they had very, very fancy rims. So. It was the last edition of the Lancer Evolution. It was the final nail of the Evolution's coffin. Uh, the final edition 
well, not many people have it because as I said on the Japanese market, only 1,000 were made. I hope there are some in Kenya and if Bugwa just put in one, they see the black roof and the other, the, the final edition emblems and all that. And I must say, well, it was not the best way to say goodbye to the Lancer Evolution series, but anyway, Mitsubishi is Mitsubishi. Let's talk about the side profile of the Mitsubishi Lancer Evolution 10. We are going to go quickly on the design cues that separate it from the Mitsubishi Lancer, the Kawaida Lancer. To identify a Lancer Evolution 10, the first design cue is that the number plates are on the side. This is uh, to, avoid, to avoid any obstacles you know on the air path the air coming into the engine then you have a hood scoop and two vents uh, the other design cue is the wheels now lancer evolution uh, 10 has size 18 it sits on size 18 alloys some of them might sit on 16s but most commonly you'll find them on 18s and if it's from the japanese market you'll either get it with this NK rims or uh, the BBS rims. They have huge brakes because with the amount of power that you get from an evolution, you will need a sufficient stopping distance. Well, the spoiler is another unique selling point of the Lancer Evolution. Well, people can put a spoiler on their Kawaida Lancers, but on the Evolution, the spoiler is also another key, you know, key design cue. The other design cue is actually very useless and these are the fake fins that we have on the fenders. Well, the side skirts also make the evolution look as sporty as it's meant to be. There is really nothing much to talk about it because it's based on the Kawaida Lancer and we have done a review of that. Uh, Una is a cheeky your review in Bugo will put a link. And wasewa mock Mitsubishi owners Kenya. Kuna wasi na unanga wako na tu Lancer flani wa mejaribu kuweka Zika Evolution. But uh, a Lancer with a CVD transmission, surely it can never match up to what this car. So it's it's good to not even want to make it look like a Lancer. Because mutaenda kupanda kinungi and it a pito wadi na demi ya diesel. The Mitsubishi Lancer Evolution series was known to have a very good all-wheel drive, uh, a very good all-wheel drive configuration. They had, you know, good technology across the series like uh, the active yoke control on some of them, which was a, a game changer when it came even to the rally scene and even the driving dynamics of the Mitsubishi Lancer Evolution. However, again, the other big mistake i feel mitsubishi made on the lancer evolution 10 was actually putting the same all-wheel drive system that we have on the nissan x-trail and the mitsubishi outlander on this car the, the it's called the super all-wheel control yeah s-a-w-c so again that is why most people will be mad at this car it's 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 more of instead of evolving it was devolving because we had amazing all-wheel drive technology on other vehicles in the series. Unfortunately for this one, well, I don't think it was a very good way to say goodbye to the Evolution series. To one and done even in a car, because it's meant to be as sporty as uh, a race car could be. Join me. What I can say when it comes to the Evolution 10, Kongya tu kweli Mitsubishi waliloba. First of all, this car is meant to be very, very, very sporty. Yes, they have tried by having the Recaro seats. Um, maybe, maybe again this because this one it's it's a, it's a base model, but we have at least the Recaro uh, bucket seats at the front. But the most annoying feature is the transmission lever. Or the shifter imagine it's meant to look like a manual transmission but it's actually an automatic and this is one of the reasons why if i'm buying an evolution i would only buy it in manual so you you just it has some sort of range splitter thingy here then twin clutch sst so this switch you can either drive this car in sport or a normal mode however on uh, on the steering wheel you have the awc the all-wheel drive the all-wheel control uh, system and you can 
play with it to switch the vehicle from okay depending on where you are driving it's like a terrain response system because you can put it to tarmac you can put it uh, switch it to gravel or uh, snow so depending on where you're driving the car uh one thing one good thing about it is that we do not have an electronic handbrake we have an actual handbrake on this car the rest of the things they are just quite simple and i don't think there is much to talk about so allow me to drive this car with the boys so that we can do an acceleration test and get to feel the evil in sport mode Guys, yes. Let me start by allow me to make a comment. Yes, sir. Do you know the Renault Lutetia is more sporty inside compared to the <laughs> to <laughs> I, the Evo? I agree. Which year of Evo is this one, Mr. Eric? Uh, well, this one, this one is a 2012. 2012, huh? Yep. Hey. Hey, even if it's sporty. The only thing I think I like about the interior of this car are the seats. The you know, right? First of all, uh. you know we know. This the Subaru, the WRXs, the the previous generations of the Evo, or from one all the way to around Evo Nine. Yes, they were known to be hardcore. Like, <laughs> get, get. I, I get it, my friends. This one is not hardcore. It's it's not what we know the Evolution series to be. You know, it's I, I have mixed emotions when you're sitting when in I'm this. sitting in this car. But you enough for a sports car. So sports cars do not have fancy features. Yes. But how do you explain this dashboard on Evo 10? Hey, plastic now. Hey, kwanza ni le plastic ya kupiga kelele, Eric. Yo kuna plastic, na kuna plastic mbaya. This one. But at least since it's it's a sports car, yes. let's let's hope that it's going to be. Let's hope that it's going to be. You know. And Exciter, so when it comes to, to acceleration. So let, let's agree on one principle. The interior of this car is basic to the core. It's supposed to be like that. Only that it has, at least it's supposed to be old school basic. Come, come close to a rally car. I, I think Tommy Mackin and wherever he, he is, mm. he would not be happy to be seated in this car. Correct. But one thing I will give up to them. It is the front seats. In fact, the rear. Bugu, I don't know how you feel, but when I was sitting there, I felt it's quite comfortable and accommodative. The Ricardo seats will be very nice, bucket-like. Eh? Actually, these are, uh, they, they are proper buckets. They are proper buckets. And, yeah. they, and they come wrapped in Alcantara. So I think they sacrificed all the, for the comfort of the seats when you are performing, Eric. You yeah, know, yeah. this car for for a sports car, it, it's supposed to have that weight reduction. Is yeah, is yeah. all aspect Zorteza. Oh, I uh, hear the, the body is made out of aluminium, blah blah for weight reduction. See, yeah. what I can say about this car is that they, it was a very bad way of saying goodbye to the Evolution series. Mm. They they stepped down. They stepped down. They, they and these I think these when Mitsubishi started being. The boring Mitsubishi they are today. I think this is when they had started having a relationship with Nissan. You remember when they had a relationship with Nissan? Yeah. And they were told not to go into rally sport and start making cars that are more consumer oriented. You know, oriented. I think this was them trying that route where they are cutting down on a lot of blah 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 blah. Uh, I think we need to go there and come back. No, I think we need to start from this side. We need to start from this side yes. for safety. For safety purposes. So you want us to try the 0 let's, to 100? Let's start. Let me put her into sport. Mm -hmm. 0 to 100. Yes, and talk. then we can make the final comments. Yes. Wait, wait, my friend. Wait, wait. I am ready for you. Eric, are you ready? Let's see if it redeems see. itself. Can yeah. we go? Yes. Can you go? Yes. Okay. When Three. you are ready. 3, 2. Okay. Okay. Take a left, Eric. Take a left. We need to talk about the performance. It's exciting. <laughs> <laughs> now you have a smile on your face. <laughs> now you have a smile on your face. Uh, Ask me. Uh -huh. 8.6 8. 
sector. But it's an evil, you see. Yeah, you expect, but it's supposed it's, to do it's less. Than, it's supposed to do less than, than that. Five. Exactly. Okay. Now Eric has a smile. <laughs> you see, the little things that make Eric happy. I'll go and work, but now he's happy. At least, even when you redeem on one thing, yeah? what it's supposed to do, actually, it has done it. Yeah. Think we can go turn from there, Eric. Apa Saint Hannah on Ezra Tushika. To kona evil. So now we're talking about weight reduction before we do this <laughs> Do you think the performance, because they've said, oh, you got him to get on a body aluminium, kutoka SG is English, by the way, because I was reading somewhere, oh, the weight reduction thing you're talking about, fantastic on this car to make it very, 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 very agile and active in terms of going uh, the speeds it's supposed to go. Yes. And I'm happy with the 8.6, even though it's not fast, fast, but it is fast exciting. I would say, yeah. I would really have loved it if we had a manual. A manual, right? But just giving the manual vibe. <laughs> How? You see, you, you cannot give a manual vibe. A manual has <laughs> see, to be a manual. See, even However, split. imagine it has a dual clutch. Yes. yes. You see, oh, yes. Even the split thing, the one that is supposed to hold the, oh, the, the shifter. <laughs> uh, the shifter. They have said, Kuliko <laughs> Kasrisha Kila Kitu at least a quick split. <laughs> <laughs> To make a team score. So for what this guy is meant to do, yeah. and Bugu, as you do your team score, tell us how it feels to be at the rear. Just in case Eric decides to have a family or carry friends at the rear. Eh? That's what I'm talking about. How is the braking? A braking, it has... We did. So the stretch we do 0 to 100, by the time we were getting slightly past the half point, we already hit the numbers. The numbers, yes. Yeah, so it was fast enough, and I remember stopping. It was so easy. I didn't feel like I was going to stop. But it has very big brakes. It has brakes that can stop. Uh, yes, that one. Yeah, that Eric, one. Eric is not saying. <laughs> <laughs> Bugwa, give yeah. us your uh, vibe. Hapo Juma. For me, it's, this is a sports car. It's not more, it's not meant for family per se. Especially up in Yuma, you don't have the isofix. How how I want isofix. So basically, for me, I feel it's more of a it's more of a driver centric car and more that the real no nothing here to go. As in, but you have cup holders. Cup holders. Sometimes, eh, I am curious for us to go on a road trip with this guy, just see how naturally it, 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 it performs on the road. I am curious for us to it to what I've seen and mm-hmm. the documentaries I've seen about the Lancers, mm-hmm. they, as in those cars were crazy. I feel this one is more to the wannabe uh, side. Like, see see for that enthusiast, like that crazy and to be she enthusiast. This is more of a, this is a, a consultant, but I'm a bit of speed and that mm-hmm. evolution feel. Mm-hmm. So for me, it's an 8.5. I feel it is lost a lot. So now it's my turn for the team score on Eric. Uh-huh. Uh, okay, now there are two ways I can give a team score to this car. There is one way that involves me being a uh, Mr. Bishi Lancer purist, the way you said it. And if that is the way to go, I'm going to give this car very bad marks. In fact, probably the best you can get for me would be a 6.5. Okay? But if I am not that guy, if I, this is the car that is introducing me to the evolution lineup, I've never owned an evolution one all the way to nine, and then suddenly I land here. Okay, I want to be on the same uh, score with Bugo. I think I'll probably go with an 8.5 uh, because I feel for this guy is meant to do it, has spiced up some you know nice feelings uh, when we are doing to zero to zero to I think that is what this guy is meant to do. Uh, so I think for me I'll leave it at simple at that point, Eric, and I'll allow you to do the final tally of these things before we fire Chebukati. <laughs> <laughs> so first of all, yes, uh, this car when when you're buying it, mm-hmm. when you're buying an Evo, this is not a rookie's car. Yes, this is a driver's car. It's purely driver centric. Yes. So first of all, for me, if I'm buying an Evo, it has to be manual, mm-hmm. and it has to be 
any of the evil series apart from this one 10 okay if i want a proper evil i would probably go for the evil six let me add some spice there so mm-hmm. that as you complete it you capture it well there is this thing we talked about there is this series of the evolution 10 yes for the uk market that has been spiced up kidogo which has better features probably more than what we have here would you consider that as an alternative to your six nope <laughs> as long as it doesn't have a 4G 63T, yes, yes. it's not an evil. For you, the 4B 11T. Me, ni kwa na gari kona engine moja na utlanda. The other two school, what's up with you? Ay, 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 ay. So, hey, at go to kwa na engine moja na utlanda na all wheel drive system. Hey, na Nissan, na Nissan Xtreme. <laughs> For me, this car, yeah. the best I would give it is actually a five. A five, eh? I think as a performance guy, I understand you. As a, mm. a purist, a guy who understands what a performance car should entail, your score is justified, my brother. Yes. 100%. Especially a guy who's been in a WRX, a proper evolution, Coming into this, it is it is a meh. You understand? But for Bugua, this is it. <laughs> what else do I need? Yes, this is it. Like you know, Bugua, the only fastest car Bugua has been in, probably driven, is the Ipa. <laughs> <laughs> so coming into this, coming, this is ultimate showdown. So don't value value for money. Yeah, value for money, one. Ah, nice. value for money now this is an enthusiast car uh, first of all if i was to buy an evolution i would buy it in manual transmission also i would prefer any evolution that is evolution nine and above well but anyway if if you because we have so many people these days who do not want uh, to drive manuals well you can get this and if you buy this car from auto select by conversations it will set you back around 1.55 million kenya shillings and we know the evos are part of those exotic cars or those sought after cars they are they are not so many and that is the value that comes with uh, a mitsubishi lancer evolution 10. Uh, however this car does need some tender love and care. By the way, you know, you auto select here to Fichangi. So, you got in at a Kutengene's or to be to one, two, three, four, five. So, in your Kuja, you know, you got in a year deal, poor son, a 1.55 on your rest offer. Then, when the Kutengene's be to Billy Tattoo. Sasa, so, so, eh, hey, did you not give any money? No, you know, I'm on a gun. Yes, in a nine, I'm nail. Eh, kid of clothes, you got in a new bunny. I hope this has been an insightful episode and remember how to select by conversations is your home of quality verified certified cars and even if the cars have some issues we'll always give you a report and tell you which issues the cars have so, so then you can make the decision if you can buy it and fix it or you Hutaki because auto select by conversations actually connects guys who are selling their cars to guys who are buying them they we make the process very easy and again we tell you kinaga ubaga uh, how the car is and we verify quality and by the way i'll say again we always give you a report on the health of the vehicle so any issues uh we, we we outline them and we tell you if they are detrimental to the car or they are not or they are minor we can also provide support as to where you can get some of these issues fixed sawa sawa so i hope this has been an insightful episode please remember also to check out Kaduka. the link is on the description below unaweza nunua gari ya auction wale wase wanataka gari za deal you can bid for a car on Kaduka's uh, auction uh, portal and who knows you might get a very affordable car. Sawa sawa. See you on Monday as we talk a little bit more about the Mitsubishi Evolution 10 as well as some other very exciting topics. Mm-hmm.